Let's go live. Let's go live. Mm -mm. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> Howdy. How are you feeling today? Happy Monday. Happy day after Grammys. Yes, yes. We'll talk more about the Grammys during our Tuesday takeover. But I gave you a lot of TikToks last night. So again, another reason to follow us on TikTok. Just making sure you can you get can you hear me? Live chat, can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> this is our weekly recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac, and I can't wait. I can't wait. They have the nerve, the weekend that I'm in Potomac, for that episode not to be happening. But it's Super Bowl weekend, which is probably perfect. That way when I get back from, you know, killing it in, the, in D.C. on February 16th, I can just relax that Sunday and not think about anything uh, related to Potomac. Southern Potomac, you know, Potomac proper. <laughs> uh, I look forward to that. We are basically sold out uh, for our February 16th date uh, at Union Stage in Potomac. No, oh, not in Potomac. In Washington, D.C. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let's get into this episode because I have things to say, but I probably have more things to say about Married to Medicine, but that won't be until 5.30 p.m. Eastern, okay? So stay tuned for that. Let's get into this recap. Live chat, if you're watching on YouTube, let us know how you would rate this week's episode from 1 to 10. Those of you that are watching on TikTok, Twitter, let me know. Hit me up and let me know how you would rate this week's episode from 1 to 10. And based on what I'm looking at on, on the YouTube stats, damn, Potomac, every week. It's getting like a rating in between like four and six. I don't know if that's a good thing. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into our recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac's latest episode, season eight, episode 12. Baby. Won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead. Just watch the shoes. Gotta turn the heat up. To get this cool. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, we are live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, behind the scenes here on TikTok. And if you're listening to this, don't forget, guys, you can hear our live recaps and additional special episodes like the ones that we've been dropping over the last couple of weeks on the Kempire Podcast. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify for everything Kempire and Kempire podcast related, head on over to KempireRadio.com. All right. I'm seeing all of your comments in regards to this episode. And look, I rewatched the episode. You know, I always watch it twice. We watched it together last night on uh, TikTok. But then I watched it again this afternoon before the live because I like to watch it at least twice because I feel like when I, we watch it together on TikTok, I'm not fully present because I'm commenting and I'm seeing what you guys are saying. So at the top of this episode, we have this scene with Giselle, Ashley, Robin, and Mia. As you know, Giselle and Ashley are starting this um, athleisure line. And you guys forced me to go look up this damn athleisure line last week. And they only had a few things set up on the site. And I told you, I'm sure that's because they're going to, along with the, the, um, the episode where we get the fashion show, that's when we're going to see more of the items. The items. 
And I think what we're seeing right now is the building of this athleisure line that they say is between, what did she say? Did she say Fashion Nova? She didn't say Fashion Nova, right? What did she say? She said that and something of Savage Fenty. What did she say was the other thing? I don't remember. It doesn't matter because it's not giving that, especially based off of their history of fashions. Okay? Just saying. Uh, look. Oh, Lululemon. Is she really thinking Lululemon? Y'all don't got Lululemon budget. Okay? Anyways, Princess Gabby said this was a filler episode. I, well, we can't keep saying that every single week. <laughs> every single week it feels like a filler episode, except except those last couple of episodes that we got where they, you know, um, she hosted that, um, Karen hosted that event in regards to um, uh, PAVE, that, that organization that she's brought on the, the, the reality show before. Um, so we did get two, at least two good episodes out of 12 episodes so far this season. So at the top of this episode, Giselle's looking at fabrics. Ashley joins her. Then Robin and Mia join her. And they're talking about coochie sweat, booty sweat. And I'm just thinking to myself, I don't want to, I, I don't care. I don't care. And here's the thing. It's not as if some of these brands that they're talking about and referring to haven't thought about this themselves. Have they mastered it? I'm thinking whatever they're going to put in the crotch area, it has been done. It might even be patented. They're going to find themselves in another lawsuit. <laughs> but I don't know because I'm not in that world. But at the same time, it's it's important to know your audience. Ain't nobody going to Ashley or Giselle. Especially not Giselle for athleisure or anything. Look, anything related to fashion or design. But I look. Maybe they'll come out with something. I think for them, it's just about, oh, it's, this is easy money. We can come out with a brand. It's very much like what what Embezzle did. I mean, Robin did. <laughs> but at least with Robin, she was solving a problem. She was solving a problem. There's actually a very specific thing that happens with her, with her particular hats that not a lot of hats have. I don't even know if she's even doing the hat business. Because my thing is, Robin, even if... The business is still up and running and you're not highlighting it. You should at least be wearing the hats on the show. I haven't seen you wear one of the hats on the show this season. Maybe Embezzle's out of business. I don't know. Like every hue. Honestly, when 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 Giselle started every hue, every, every hue, I was very happy for her. I was like, look at this woman starting a beauty brand at the very beginning of of her time on this reality show. And remember, this was f several years ago. So I was like, good for her. And then it went out of business. I think that was karma. I know it was the pandemic and a lot of things shut down, but I feel like that's her karma. I feel like that's her karma. Based off her of her behavior, that's her karma. Anyways. So they're talking about coochie sweat, booty sweat, I don't care. They're talking about camel toe, more, more stuff I don't care about. All right. And honestly, the scenes with, mind you, this is four main cast members. We should be fully engaged and entertained. And I'm sure some of you were probably engaged and entertained. I wasn't. I watched it again and I was like, okay, maybe, you know, I missed something last night. And I'm watching it and I'm like, this is not giving anything. And there's four main people in the scene. Four main people. And I'm just thinking... They're, this should this should be a little bit more fun. They're not fun. Only one of the four of them, I will give uh, Mia as someone that's being fun and entertaining. Ashley used to be, but now Ashley's just leaned into being the undercover villain. Maybe not so undercover. I don't enjoy Ashley anymore. Anyways. So then, of course, they're talking about Wendy's event that's happening. Giselle says that she's going because everyone else is going because, you know, she's not trying to film or go anywhere with um, just Wendy and Candace. And then they talk about whether or not Neko is invited to Wendy's event. And Ashley d just found out that uh, Wendy decided to give an olive branch to Neko and invite her to the Happy Eddie event. Then they asked, is Ike invited? And Mia was like, he wasn't on the group chat for the men. I mean, the way that Ike was sort of like stepping to Eddie at that um, other group gathering, yeah, he wouldn't be invited to my event either. But my thing is, if you're inviting the wife, you might as well invite the husband. But it's not like um, Ike was even in town, probably, because he, remember, he's a traveling doctor. So I don't even think he was even home to even go to the event. 
But I wouldn't blame Eddie for not inviting him, especially when you you pumping up your chest at me over Facebook uh, unfriending. Maybe. All right. Uh, so that's what they talk about in that scene. Then we go to this next scene with NECA. So NECA has uh, a bido, a wine, that's a uh, sparkling wine that she's working on. And that's all she wanted to promote in this episode. Because I know it probably felt like an infomercial for a lot of you guys. But this, yes, she came on here. She started four months before filming because she wanted something to promote. Yes, she's a, a lawyer for a fintech company. But she wants to, she's like, I'm going to be on this show. I'm going to start a, some sort of business. Okay, I'm not going to be mad at it. Very much like I said, I'm not mad at Every You when she started Every You. All right. But I, anyone else scrunch up your face like when she says in the morning, mind you, she's trying to get pregnant. In the morning, she takes her prenatal vitamins with champagne. I just feel like if you're trying to get pregnant and you're having difficulties getting pregnant, first of all, why are you drinking champagne in the morning? Secondly, why are you drinking champagne with your prenatal vitamins? Thirdly, why are you drinking champagne? Not to say that you can't. I'm not trying to be, look, 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 look. I'm not trying to be like eight and a half from Beverly Hills. But I'm asking questions because I'm thinking I would want my body to be like a, a cleanse vessel for pregnancy just to rule out any thing that might hold me back from getting pregnant. Not that I could, but you know what I'm saying. But when she says she's taking with her prenatal vitamins, I, I don't, do I believe she's really doing that? <laughs> Look, part of me doesn't. Part of me feels like she's just doing it for the camera and trying to think that that sounds fabulous. But to me, it doesn't sound fabulous. It sounds um, annoying <laughs> and dangerous. Okay. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, you guys are, no, she says champagne. I have to rewind back. It's like, is she drinking her own sparkling wine? No, she's drinking champagne. Let me say thank you. We got a couple of super chats. Joe, thank you so much for the super chat. Joe says, GNA needs to check the site before they do the official launch. We don't want another she by she in debacle. Then again, are y'all going to the site? We went last week, remember? We went last week. Um, Look, <laughs> I don't think that it will be a she in by Oh, wait, a she by she in um, debacle, to be honest with you. And I know a lot of people make comparisons to, we have to keep in mind that Sheree started she by um, someone else like 15 years ago, started it, did a fashion show with no fashions, and then kind of put it away in a closet for a very long time. And then decided, oh, because she had no other storyline, I'm going to bring it back. Like, I don't, I, I feel like it's an unfair comparison when people, I saw someone compare the um, something about her restaurant. They feel like it's giving vibes that it's going to be a, a she by someone else situation. I was like, that's an unfair comparison. These people are literally actively working on making this a business right now. So I like, I don't want to give, it's not like we've been waiting years for fashion from GNA or the, the ladies of Vanderpump Rules. Look, you look, I'm fair. Look, I try to be fair every once in a while. Linda, thank you so much for the super chat. Linda says, hey, Campire, it's been a year for me. I just um, I just wait for your review. Linda, happy anniversary. Thank you so much for being uh, a monthly member here on the channel. We appreciate your support. And thank you so much for the super chat. Happy anniversary. And I appreciate it. I love that you guys just watch my review, not the episode, even though I have to watch it twice. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Look, all right. <laughs> all righty then. Um, so NECA. So NECA has this meeting. Why does NECA act as if? Why does NECA act as if she doesn't know these people are coming to her house? She's like, oh, someone's at my door. And then when, when Lebe comes in and then her other friend comes in, she's like... Then people just see my car in the in the driveway. They're just showing up. Girl, you knew these people were coming. Why are we acting like you didn't know these people were coming? And to be honest with you, this scene with Lebe and your friend just wasn't, wasn't hitting or interesting to me either. So Lebe and Chica come over and she has them carry their chairs all the way up. And she has she has them carry their chairs all the way upstairs. Why can't y'all just sit downstairs? <laughs> Anyways. Um, so she also talks about how her home is still undone. She's still in the middle of it. Did she just buy this home so she could be on the show? 
And I know what you're thinking. No, who would do that? There are housewives that do this. You know this by now. If you've been a Housewives fan for a long time, you know that Housewives do this. Or she could have just bought the house and the house is undone. Very possible. But it's in North Potomac. Some of you hit me up and explain to me what the North Potomac, South Potomac um, situation means. And I'm still sort of like, this is sort of becoming the DMV conversation. And we are not getting into the DMV conversation when I come to Washington, D.C. on February 16th. I'm in I'm in D.C. proper, okay? I don't need to talk about <laughs> DMV proper, okay? I'm not getting into that debate, all right? So, NECA t- tells tells the ladies that she's planning this, unpack, uh, this unpacking party where the ladies will be dressed in their pajamas, all right? And she tells Lebe, she's like, um, I invited Wendy. You know, are you going to be comfortable with that? Lebe was like, is she actually going to show up? Oh, it's like the it was a foreshadowing because I really thought if she's going to invite her, she's going to show up. You know, it's filmed. Lebe then warns NECA because NECA says, you know, she did invite me to her Happy Eddie event. Well, she was like, well, be careful because now you're going to be on her turf. And that's when I was sort of looking at Lebe like, you are the source of the issues. And I'm not saying that NECA's innocent, but I also feel like Lebe, who was trying to get, you know, the, the clout chasing BBL. You remember that? I feel like you are the source of the problem. Like, I look at her and those eyebrows, and I'm like, I can't trust a person with those type of eyebrows. I can't trust a person with, with eyebrows like that. I think Lebe's the problem. But NECA, you're part of the problem, too, because you fell for it. Look, you fell for it, and you ran with it. There's so much more, I'm sure, going on between Lebe, Wendy, Wendy's sister, Ivy, and NECA. I feel like it's so much more that's not being said, and that's annoying. <laughs> Look, that's annoying because it makes the audience feel like, why are we still arguing about this? Why are we still talking about this? We will continue, all right? So we, we get the scene with Candace and Chris. We have not seen Chris in a month of Sundays. All right. Candace is working on her line. She's busy acting and singing and we're rehashing that. They play her song. Great. Wonderful. They, they talk about the Happy Eddie event. Candace can't stay for long. So she's giving Chris instructions. I need you to get me this particular, you know, because, you know, she, she like a blunt. I need you to get me this when you go. OK. The other guys are going to be there. So Chris will be fine. But Candace asks him, you know, are, how are you going to feel if you see forehead or ankles? I can't. I can't wear her. Um, and Chris and Chris is very mature. Chris is saying, he's like, if they say hello, I will return the hello. He's better than me. Isn't he better than you? I probably I would have paid him dust all of them dust. I would have paid all of them dust if I saw them at this event. Just because of the accusations you accuse me of, I'm not trying to engage with you at all. Because I don't need anyone to say I was looking at them too long or I said the wrong thing. I'm not talking to y'all. Just saying. Damn it, we're already at the Happy Eddie event. So we're at the Happy Eddie event. We find out more about this, this, you know, business that Eddie's involved in. Apparently there's two strains. Again, producers, you're getting very happy with the editing. We don't we didn't need the depiction, okay? So we get the two strains, and the, there's a, a third strain with 30% THC, and it's called Zen Wen. All right. All right. But what we find out in this scene is that they're not going to roll real weed. They're going to roll like spices and things like that. Oregano, because technically, first of all, the folks in there say that it's partially because they don't want to scare anyone. But no, at this point in time when they're filming, it's not legal in Maryland. So they really can't roll it because then they would be on. Tr- they would be in trouble. Uh, so so the group all has their commentary in regards to um, the, the, the um, not using the weed. All right. Anyways, um, Ashley arrives and Ashley has some interesting comments because of what happened between her and Chris last season. She says that um, you have no place in my realm based off the things that he said to her last season in, reg- in regards to his reaction of what they were accusing him of. R- Ashley, you're married to Gullum. (laughs) 
sidebar, we didn't get a chance. I didn't do a separate video. I did a short form video talking about uh, Candace's, um, Candace's win, her legal win. So can I just update you guys on that? Because I know some of you don't follow the short form stuff. So I do want to talk about that really briefly, really briefly, if we can. Because it's important for us to know because it's a part of the storyline and they're going to talk about this during the reunion. So People Magazine had the exclusive in regards to the lawsuit. So, you know, Gullum, a.k.a. Michael Darby, was suing Candace for defamation for things that she said on the show and accused him of. All right. So a judge in Virginia gave Candace Diller Bassett a stress-free start to 2024 last month. We didn't even know that this happened. Dismissing the defamation lawsuit she was facing from Michael Darby, the estranged husband of Real Housewives of Potomac co-star Ashley Darby. So first filed on February 15, 2023, a dismissal with prejudice was issued in, on the, in the case on January 3rd. With a final order entered on January 31st, Michael, the court determined, was precluded from maintaining a lawsuit against Dillard Bassett based on a release that he signed to appear on the Bravo reality series. Meaning that you were on the show, she, this is part of her job to comment and make shady comments about her cast members. It would be like one of the ladies trying to sue her for saying something shady about them. So the court decided that, well, no, you signed a release to be on the show. You have no grounds here. So when a case is dismissed with prejudice, it becomes a final judgment and may not be reasserted. Diller Bassett has remained mum about the, the, the uh, suit because you remember they tried to bring it up during filming this year. And she was like, this is a legal situation. I'm not talking about it because they were literally in the middle of it and fighting it. Uh, she refused to discuss the legal, legal matter when her RHP co-stars co brought it up during filming of season eight. But now that it's over, she's breaking her silence to people exclusively. She says, I am incredibly grateful to God for protecting me. <laughs> says the drive back singer who's 37. I am also grateful for common sense. The support of my family and my incredible legal team for helping the plaintiff to get exactly what he deserves from me absolutely nothing <laughs> meanwhile Diller Bass's lawyers Kenneth Bynum and uh, Robert Jenkins and Madison Gibbs of Bynum and Jenkins Law are also celebrating Bynum and Jenkins Law is honored to have represented Mrs. Bassett and assist in defending her name against these allegations they tell people in a statement people reached out to Michael for comment but Michael um, was probably hanging out with Juan and didn't get the message. I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> so I find I say all that to say, bringing it back to Ashley and, and the things that she says about Chris in this scene, it's like you have all nerve to talk about not he doesn't exist in your realm when your husband has been accused of much worse against you, but also crew of this show. So save me on how Chris is not in your realm. Girl, your realm is dirty. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but not sorry. Anyways. Um, <laughs> so Karen greets Mia with a handshake. So we're back to that between Mia and Karen. As you know, their little beef right now is because of Karen's last minute invite to the rest of the group to Surrey. All right. So Mia, as you know, did not like that. Karen did not like Mia's response. All right. Um, so Karen says that M Mia wasn't first string. <laughs> you were the backup. Lies. The lies. <laughs> but I love Karen because, you know, Karen's always going to have a response. All right. All right. So um, Mia calls Siri boring and Karen says, Mia, your life, your, your life is, wait, no, she says, you and you and your boring ass life. Damn. Do you think, I don't think, see, here's the thing. I, I, you know, we can love Karen, but I don't think Mia's life is boring. Based on what we know of Mia and what's going on in Mia's life. Oh, it's far from boring. But I get it. That, that was her clap back. Okay. So then Mia says um, she refers to Karen as an old dog and told her to get some new tricks. Karen then responds, you are the trick. <laughs> oh, okay. I just don't understand why. What, can we all just get along? <laughs> can we all just get along? 
as soon as NECA comes in, of course, she does say hello to Dr. Wendy Acepo, but then she makes a side comment. I don't know if anyone picked this up. Oh, she's dressed like a joint because, you know, Dr. Wendy had like a full on white um, outfit. Okay. I don't, I honestly didn't think of that until you said it, NECA. But why would you come in here saying that? Just, I would just come in with a heart open. I'm not going to say anything shady. I'm going to come in and just be like, hey, thank you for inviting me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to make any sort of shady comments. Giselle also arrives and doesn't even say hello to Dr. Wendy Acefo. And then producers play all the times that Dr. Wendy Acefo didn't say hello to Giselle. But here's the difference, producers. None of those events were Giselle's events. She invited Giselle, even though she really didn't have to. She invited Giselle to come to this event. The least Giselle could have done was like, Hey, Wendy, thank you for inviting me. You don't have to hug. You don't have to even engage in beyond that. You could have at least said, hey, thank you for inviting me, period. And I know some of the Giselle uh, fans would be like, well, she said this and this. Then don't come. Why are you coming? Oh, because we're filming a reality. No, you don't have to come. You don't have to come. Especially if you're going to be like that. And then Giselle makes a comment about Chris's weight. She was just like, it looks like he's stress eating. I'm trying to understand why you have this man's name in your mouth, period. If this man made you feel so uncomfortable, if you don't like this man, why do you have to have a comment about this man at all? At all, because if the tables were, were, were turned and he made a comment about you, oh my God, he said this about me. He made me uncomfortable. It, it'd be all kinds of stuff. You would add so much sauce to the situation. He made me go into a room and lock the door. But you are, first of all, when they flash back to Chris from last season, I was like, Chris looks the same, actually. I think maybe because he's not wearing a blazer, so he looks different. But I was like, wait, but even if he did gain weight, why must you have, a, have to have a comment? Why must you have, a, have, have to have some sort of comment? Especially because y'all don't, y'all don't, you know, are, you aren't cool with each other. You are just miserable because you came there by yourself and there's no husband that has gained any weight <laughs> standing by you. Every week I try to like Giselle. Look, every week, and I'm just, I can't. You make it impossible, Giselle. You make it impossible. I thought that comment was so unnecessary. Because let's be honest. Chris ain't the only one that has gained weight over the years on this show. But we'll leave it at that. Rewind the tape, producers. Rewind the tape. Just saying. Moving on. <laughs> Look, moving on because we're not done with Giselle. All right. Um, so the group starts um, their rolling class and they're making all kinds of comments about rolling oregano. But again, they really can't roll a weed because it's not legal yet in Maryland. But of course, they have their comments. Who, you, who do you think rolled the best um, joint? Did you guys see um, Robin? Regular Robin? Regular Robin be rolling at home. Regular ramen's um, little weeds that look like tight. I was like, let me find out she's an expert. Let me find out she's an expert. Um, hold on. I want to read this comment. Uh, Trinity says, I personally think Giselle had a little crush on Chris in the past. Remember how she used to fall over for his cooking? I think somehow, and talk about his brown penis. Anyways, uh, she may have gotten a little diss and now, and now it's sour. I think everyone could could vouch that maybe there was maybe not, a, you know, inappropriate crush, but maybe in some way she had a little, you know, little something for him. Maybe. Look, maybe. Let me say thank you. We've got a couple of super chats. Thank you guys so much for the super chat. Thank you, Nicole. Nicole says NECA is doing a disservice to women who, who really are trying to to get pregnant. It's not a joke. Neck bones. <laughs> you guys in these names. All right. Thank you so much for the super chat. Busy, thank you so much for the super chat. Busy says, but when Candace said Ashley shouldn't drink while trying to get pregnant, um, the people got mad and told her to shut up. The goal post. Oh, that you're going back way back, Busy. You're going way back. Mm-mm-mm-mm. 
Uh, Angelica, thank you so much for the super chat. Angelica says, GNA gives cheap vibes. I mean, look, to be honest with you, we haven't seen GNA yet. They're, they're in the exploratory phase. <laughs> now, like Karen would say, they, we haven't seen the actual... Oh, well, no, we did. We looked at the website last week. That didn't look expensive. Damn. See, me, see, I do try to give them grace. You saw how I was trying to give them grace? You saw how I was twerking on that fence? And then I remembered... Look, and then I remembered that, um, yeah, we did look at some of the stuff. <laughs> uh, Toya, thank you, or Tanya, sorry. Tanya, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, super sticker, we appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Trans Talk with Miss Chastity, thank you so much for the super chat. Wow, thank you. Hey, YouTube husband, we got married? Uh, and fam, NECA is an, is an annoying pick me. I'm ready for cream... Uh, I'm ready for the green eye bandits to be replaced. We can keep Ashley mess me Ashley's messy ass for now. Wanted to show some love since I can't uh, make any of your current in-person dates coming near Boston. I might be. Stay tuned. Uh, this week we will be announcing our Philly date. So if you're in the Philly area, stay tuned for that. We will be making an announcement very, very soon. And right after that, in, in the next week or so, we will be announcing more dates of the Kempire After Dark tour. But the next one that's up is February 16th in D.C. I think there might be like a couple of tickets left, y'all. Y'all can go check. I don't even know how many are left at this point. The last I checked, it was like 20. Um, but yeah, actually, last I checked, it was a long time ago, actually. Um, I don't remember how much are left. AC, thank you so much for the super chat. AC says, I agree. We need a cast shakeup. In my opinion, split up the Green Eye Bandits. Robin is giving nothing, but at least Jizzy can be the show's villain. She's not even a good villain, though. Like, she's not even a good villain. Like, she's a real life villain. Like, to me, she's a liability. It's one thing to, to be a villain and be shady and be, you know, wicked in different ways. But no, she, to me, is a liability. It's like, she's beyond a villain. Nick, thank you so much for the super chat. Nick says, seems like production plays in Giselle's favor. All these flashbacks of Candace and Wendy, but never any of Giselle. And look, they're not doing, they're not doing, at least the editors. Because remember, um, Eric Fuller says he doesn't do editing. And we're still wondering, what the hell do you do, Eric? Um, so I don't know who decides what in regards to editing, but somebody's favoring Giselle. Because like I said, that whole, you know, Wendy never says hello to Giselle. But again, all those examples were never Giselle's events. I'm sure if Wendy went to a Giselle event, she would say hello. All right. But anyways, moving on. So they're, they're rolling their spices. All right. Wendy then ends the event by saying, you know, she's just happy that everyone came. And it seemed like for the very first time that a lot of people had a good time and everybody was laughing. And then Giselle under her breath was like, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. I will give editors a moment here. They did show the multiple times that Giselle did laugh in, in during this event. And at one point, Karen looked at her like, <laughs> did you guys notice Karen's face? She looked at Giselle like, why are you laughing like that? Gave her the funny, funny face. Anyways, um, but Wendy said that she was grateful for that. Um, as I said to you before, Giselle was just like, I didn't laugh. Yes, she was. Uh, yes, you did. Okay. Uh, Robin, after Gordon leaves, checks in on Mia. And Mia says that um, she, she basically alludes that I can't leave G right now because his whole family has turned his back on him. And I'm sort of like, wait, um, how do we get to leaving G right now? Th that was so weird. I, I also feel like a lot of these housewives work together in regards to getting their storylines out on the show because that was a random question to ask Um ask me i know they've been talking about it but mia mia's just like she can't leave him right now so at this point i'm sure mia is already talking to someone new maybe the rapper maybe the married man who knows who knows that will come up in in a few minutes all right guys if you're just joining us don't forget to like the video it's an easy and free way of supporting the channel but if you're listening to this don't forget to give us a five star rating on apple Podcasts and on spotify and, you know, Valentine's Day is literally, literally almost a week away. But you still have time to get some roses that will last you up to a year. As you can see behind me, for those who are listening, you can't see it behind me, but you can see it on my YouTube channel, uh, our Rose Forever. As I said to you before, they last up to a year. They're affordable and you get a discount. Kempire 40 will give you $40 off of your order. Plus, if you use the discount code INFLUENCER, you can use both discounts 
you can get free worldwide shipping. More information on Rose Forever will be available in the description of our video. And we will be giving away more roses again this week, but you gotta be here in order to win. All right, thank you to Rose Forever for sponsoring today's live show. We appreciate them. All right, and speaking of who we appreciate, shout out to our members of the channel. We appreciate them as well. And our King's Guards. Don't forget to say hello to the King's Guards in the live chat. All right. Um, let me say thank you, Mama Ali, for the super chat. Mama Ali says, uh oh, there we go. Uh, congrats, Kemp, on 342,000 subscribers. I didn't even realize we hit 342. Thank you. Yay! Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And uh, shout out to, uh, I think it's pronounced Saint Ho <laughs> on Instagram. They featured our uh, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake TikTok that we did in regards to hot topics from last week. So head on over to their Instagram and go, go tag me and let me know that you've seen our, our video posted there. All right. All right. Moving back to this. So before the weed party is over, so, ne you know, Mia talks about what's going on with her and G. NECA pulls Wendy to the side and, and thanks her for inviting her and says, you know, I'd like to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And Wendy seems a little resistant to having a one-on-one. -on -one. She says um, that it's going to take her some time to process everything. And she says that she doesn't need a one-on-one -on -one after what NECA has said uh, about her. And look, um, we said this last week, it's getting a little frustrating, both with Giselle and Wendy not willing to move forward. And I can say the same thing with Wendy. I, I'm going to give NECA credit last week and this week. At least she's trying to move forward. What she said about Wendy's mom, what, what she said about um, Wendy wasn't nice. Calling Wendy the B word, things like it wasn't nice. But you are co-workers. You are filming a show. It's not about you. If you if you can't film with people, get off the show. Get off the show. We don't like to see it with Giselle, and we don't like to see it with Wendy. Wendy, at least she's she's extending the olive branch. Go and sit down for a conversation. And obviously, Wendy didn't want to have the conversation because she didn't want to rehash or re relive the rumors that her mom had some sort of shrine. My thing is that you just shut it down. Like, I don't want to rehash what happened before. How about we, we learn to be civil and cordial and get to know each other? That's how you handle it because of what you're doing. If this was real life, I get it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even deal with this woman. But you're on a show that you are being paid to interact with these women. And now I feel like both Giselle and Wendy are doing the same thing in different ways with different people. And I and like I said, I appreciated NECA saying, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try and have a one on one with you. I know I came in wrong. I came in hot. Wendy believes she came in with an agenda. And I believe that, too. But again, either you, you play the game or get off the show. The same with 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 Giselle. Play the game or get off the show. And remember, initially I said, I feel like Wendy is willing to, to interact with all the ladies, including Giselle. But for some reason, she does not want to see it for, for NECA. And maybe there's more to it. But like I said at the top of this live recap, I feel like there's so much more to what's going on with Wendy, NECA, and their families. But they're not willing to say it, and it's annoying for the audience. Then both of you leave. Because if we can't figure out what the hell we're watching, it's not entertaining. That's why every single week, all of you saying, I can't watch this show. This is boring. Because nobody wants to film with anybody. The only person that's willing to film with everybody is uh, Karen. <laughs> Karen. Mia. Even even Candace. Candace will film with, with Giselle. She might say a bunch of shady things, but she'll still film with her. Anyways, that was annoying. So Wendy, Wendy's just like, I don't want to have a one-on-one -on -one with her. All right. So Mia and Gordon go on a date lunch date. What's going on with these couples going on date lunch dates? Well, Mia says they have to do a date lunch date because they don't have a nanny. They're struggling. So they're taking the advice of their therapist and they're spending more time together. As I said before, they're doing the date date because they can't afford a nanny. They don't have a, a nanny anymore. And that's a problem for Mia. 
That's a problem for, for Mia. So Mia says the family stuff is affecting their relationship. The family stuff. Do you guys believe it's the family stuff or it's it's what the family stuff has caused in regards to their financial ruin? She insists that it's not about the, fi the finances. I don't believe that. <laughs> because the minute the money had dried up, she was ready to get out of there. To be honest with you. All right. Gordon says that Mia has cut him deep and hard. I believe it. Mia has a uh, Mia's dark. I know Mia can be fun and funny on the show, but Mia has shown some dark sides too. So God only knows what she said to him off camera. But she believes that Gordon hasn't taken any accountability in his part in regards to what's going on with his family. Look, we don't know what went on with the family, but I have a feeling that the family cut cut Gordon out because of Mia. Because remember, Mia was the one that was directly involved in the day-to-day -day of this family business. And not to say that Gordon had nothing to do with the business, but she was involved in day-to-day. -day. If Mia was so valuable to the company, if Mia was such a great CEO, and I get it, she's married to, to Gordon, but if she was such a great CEO, do you think they really would have gotten rid of her too? All we saw of the fake CEO is her organized a cabinet, and even then it was empty. <laughs> Look, even the cabinet was empty. So I, like, part of me is her saying that her being on the side of the family, I'm like, are you hoping to get your job back even after you get a divorce? I don't, I don't see you. I see you probably the reason why they got rid of both of you. That's how, that's how I always felt. Again, I don't know what went down. It seems very weird and suspicious on what went down. But it feels as if they pushed you both out for, for something. For something. I don't know what it is, but I feel like... Mm. Remember, um, Giselle said during the reunion, which wasn't very nice, um, that the way it was being described, like it was money laundering or something like that. I don't know. Like, I don't trust Mia. I feel like Mia is the root of why the family has cut Gordon out of the business. But like I said, we don't know the full story. But will we ever get the full story? We still don't understand what exactly went down. What we do understand is that they've been pushed out. Oh, Amy, 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 Amy. Hold on, wait. Amy, allegedly. Exactly. Mia, she says Mia probably stole 40 k for the renovations on their rental, allegedly. I just feel like it's more about Mia and less about Gordon. But she keeps saying that it's Gordon. Gordon's not taking any accountability for his part and what, what's going down with the family. She said that at one point she got to, to the point where she retained a divorce attorney, which we know about. Um, she says that it wasn't about finances. She said that the environment at home was hostile. And he, he was like, you got to clean it up because you're going to make it. He was like, it was nothing physical. I mean, when she says that, that it was a hostile environment, I didn't think anything physical. But now I'm like, <laughs> okay, Gordon. All right. Um, so they end up talking about Ashley and her situation with Michael. And apparently Michael had back surgery, so Ashley was help, helping take care of him. I don't see anything wrong with that, but there have been rumors that Ashley really isn't getting a divorce. Gordon says that why would Ashley give up her sugar daddy? Which leads to a conversation about he and Mia wouldn't get a divorce Basically, they would figure out some uh, mutual beneficial arrangement. And if you've seen any of the drama since it came out that these two were separating, he basically has said he given her a free pass basically to have an open relationship, but she would have to still be with him. And a lot of us were like, Gordon, why would she still be with him when she can find another rich man? Yes, that'd be beneficial to you. But it'd be beneficial to her to leave your ass. <laughs> look, look, damn. <laughs> but literally, we're seeing the 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 early foreshadowing of what's going to happen in the relationship. And Mia basically in this conversation, you could tell that Mia is done. I think they're filming to film a scene, but she, I think she had already moved on. Don't you? Mia says um, there isn't any amount of money to keep someone in captivity. She she was already done, y'all. She was done done by by this um this scene that they filmed. Gordon really felt like the money because that's what initially got them together. I'm sure. So I'm sure he probably thought you know the money will keep her. 
you can go off and do your own thing, but you still come home to me. And she's just like, no, that's not the way I'm picturing it. So by now, you know that Mia's back with an old flame, <laughs> a radio personality. All right. <laughs> Look, all right. All right. Guys, you're just joining us. We are talking about the latest episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac. We have almost 1,800 of you on YouTube alone. Shout out to those of you watching on the Kempire and Kempire Daily on Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter, and behind the scenes here on TikTok. TikTok, keep tapping your screens. Let's get to 10,000 likes. Uh, but if you're a part of the replay crew, be sure to let us know where you're watching from, how you would rate this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac, and your thoughts on some of the things that I've said, some of the things that you watch, some of the things that some of the callers will say, because we will be dropping the call-in link in... Two seconds. Let me actually drop it right now before I forget. So if you're a member of the channel, we're going to drop the call-in link first for you on the community tab. So let me just do that now while I'm thinking about it. And guys, be sure to check out the video that we dropped yesterday night, literally. Um, yeah, last night, we dropped a video on Candy Burris. Candy Burris is officially or has officially made the announcement that she will be not, that she will not be returning to the Real Housewives of Atlanta amid the reboot rumors. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, okay? I saw that Andy Cohen is, um, you know, giving Candy her flowers, giving her flowers in regards to her leaving and, you know, that she'll continue to work with the, with the uh, network. But Candy said that they did offer her to come back. Her statement was interesting. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Senior Royals, we dropped the call-in link for you guys there. Uh, Royal Court members, we're dropping the call-in link for you as well. And for those that are listening on uh, the podcast, if you want to hear the callers, we don't include the callers on the podcast. So if you want to hear the callers, be sure to subscribe to the Kempire channel. And don't forget to subscribe to our backup channel, Kempire Radio especially all of you that are new here. God forbid anything were to happen on any of the platforms. Because, you know, sometimes TikTok be acting up too. And you want to make sure that you stay connected. Be sure to follow me and subscribe to the Kempire Radio YouTube channel as well. All right? Um, Shah says that Mia was literally with Gordon for his money and, and life that he can provide her. Now that's drying up. The love in the children isn't enough to sustain her. And it's like she thinks, it's like she's gaslighting us. Like we don't, see clearly what's happening here she's like it's not about the finances okay girl <laughs> look all right mia all right neca's unpacking party all right i already said to myself um why would you have an unpacking party with people you barely know why would you do that i get it you want to have an event but i would much rather you say i'm gonna host a little luncheon at my home or a housewarming but in who wants to unpack <laughs> your stuff? And we barely know you. And we barely know you. And I got to get dressed in pajamas? Okay, girl. <laughs> so NECA says that Wendy, if, if Wendy comes, it's a new be uh, beginning. And she brings everything back because she wants to promote her Bido, um sparkling wine. It, clearly, she's trying to promote that in this episode. All right? Because apparently she's been working on it for four months at this time. Okay, so Karen says to everyone, she comes in, she's like, hello, everyone. Sharice is there because, you know, Sharice is, is NECA's neighbor. But here's the thing. The only reason why Sharice has has hitched her wagon to NECA is because she's a full time housewife on the show. And Sharice will do anything to be on this show. And it's become so sad and pitiful, Sh Sharice. It's become so sad and pitiful. This is why Ashley thinks that you would pay money for the D. <laughs> Ashley is no one's friend. <laughs> Ashley is no one's friend. Okay? So Karen comes in. She says hello to everyone, including Sharice. And she was like, and everyone says hello. Oh, gosh. She's so hateful. Like, why are you here, Sharice? Like, why are you here? Giselle asks if, um, if Wendy's coming. And the group all, apparently, besides NECA, doesn't know that Wendy isn't coming. Giselle says that Wendy um, should have told the host. And look, I will agree. The same way that you should have said hello to the host at the weed party, Giselle. But here's the thing. I really do feel as if, um, Wendy, if you're not gonna going to go, you could have sent a text message to NECA 
to unless something happened offline that we didn't know. But we don't know that. What we what we are seeing, Doctor Wendy Asefo, is you just be just hard to deal with. Because she extended an invite. You extended an, an, an invite to the wee party. She showed up and she was nice and polite. And she said hello, unlike Giselle. Even asked you, you know, I'd like for us to move forward. Let's have a one-on-one. She invites you to her unpacking party. I know. Look, I get it. Because Wendy says, girl, call a, call a U-Haul and leave me the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I laughed at that part. I thought that was funny. Because we all feel that way about this unpacking party. However, <laughs> look, however... You could have at least sent a text message. I'm sorry. Come up with some excuse. I'm not going to be able to make it, but thank you so much for thinking of me and inviting me. It didn't have to be the truth. <laughs> Look. It didn't have to be the truth. That's all you had to say. But you didn't even send her a text. You have everybody else. You have everybody else. Uh, you know what I mean? Know about this and you you didn't. Just saying. Um, M. Forth Missy says, um, uh, why is she reached there? We're trying to understand as well. We're trying to understand as well. Um, let me say thank you. We had a, a couple more Super Chats. Uh, Ty Tyrese, thank you so much for the Super Chat. She says, can someone please remind me what issue the GEBs have with the SFOs? I can't remember anything. It was, remember when um, Wendy got her BBL and did some work on her and there were rumors that Eddie was looking at um, Instagram models and is that why she's changing her body? And then uh, Wendy confronted Giselle and she says, you're, look, I can't believe I'm rehashing this. I can't believe I remember this. And she says, you are everything that everyone has ever said you were. Remember when Wendy, Wendy said that to Giselle? And that, that's also when she talked about um, Robin and her relationship and how that's not even a real relationship. So Robin never recovered from that either. Okay. I can't believe I remember any of that. <laughs> um, uh, Sharon, thank you so much for the super chat. Sharon says, NECA and Candace have the same issue. They go slicing with their mouth, their mouths and are shocked when people don't want to instantly make up. NECA also adds gas to the fire with slick comments in between makeup attempts. But they're also filming a show. They're also filming. I always have to remind you guys that they're filming a show. I can understand you might not liking someone, but not showing up, refusing to, to engage with people is not enjoyable for the audience to watch. It's still a show of entertainment. It's reality, but this reality is not fun to watch. So someone's got to go or, or something's got to happen. Because we're not going to do another season of, I don't like her. I'm refusing to film with her. Like, no. Trinity, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate, or the super sticker. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We appreciate it. A hamburger. Are you trying to give me some food? Love it. Uh, Tamara, thank you so much for the super chat. She said, I felt so bad for Gordon. Really? Not if you really know the history of Gordon and how he got with, with Mia. And what, what is Mia his, like his fourth wife? Third or fourth wife? Just saying. Anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did recently saw this clip where um, when they were doing the reasonably shady game at Giselle's house and Wendy, Wendy said, uh, hating on all this, and they showed um, Giselle's home. I mean, Giselle's a lot more sensitive than people think. All right? Essence says, this show is about conflict and conflict conflict resolution. They are supposed to fight, make up, and fight again. Or if you feel it's impossible to make up, you there's the door. There's the door. Nobody's holding anybody here. Nobody's holding anybody here. Vanessa says, Gordon is an old food. No, oh, damn. Don't nobody feel sorry for him? <laughs> no, we have somebody in the chat that does feel sorry for him. Letitia says, and he cheated on his ex-wife with Mia. Yeah, remember, she admitted this. In Miami, she was laying it low and spreading it wide on Miami Beach. Just saying. Jenna, hey, Jenna. Jenna says, uh, it's not impossible, but an apology first before the sit-down makes more sense. Um, Jacob on TikTok says, Gordon knew what he was getting into. Hot Yogi says, didn't he cheat with his wife with Mia? Yes. Laying it low and spreading it wide on Miami Beach. Just saying. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's 
She admitted this. She admitted this. Anyways, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. So we find out that Wendy's not coming. All right. So they're all opening up NECA's wedding gifts from two years ago. Why hasn't she? I guess maybe she was saving it for her new home. That's why she didn't open those gifts. But why are we opening these gifts with people you just met? It's just weird. It's weird. And even the ladies are commenting on how weird it is. Even the people that like her. They're like, this is weird. Why are we doing this? Karen and Mia get into it again. And Karen brings up the fact that, um, well, first of all, Mia says, takes a trick to know a trick. And then they flash back to when Mia was alluding to Karen that she has a friend that knows the guy that Karen was with. So Karen's like, well, if we're going to bring up rumors, I hear that you're with a rapper. And I heard that you're screwing a married man. And then Mia's response Kind of solidified for me, oh, there's some truth to this. There's some truth to this. But she denies sleeping with a married man. She says, the only married man I'm sleeping with is my husband. Only for us to find out later that she's with this other man. And she's still married to Gordon. So a lot of people like to say Karen be making stuff up. But after she talked about uh, Juan Dixon and the lady holding hands that looks like her in Georgetown. And then all of a sudden the cheating rumor came out with the lady from Canada, I'm just saying, unless Karen Huger is an Oracle, she be hearing things. Look, she be hearing things. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways, guys, we have uh, quite a few people backstage that want to share their opinions. We're going to take callers in just a second. Uh, we are talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac live chat. We will drop the call in link for you guys, but we have almost 2000 people in the building, but we don't even have 700 likes. Let's get to 750 likes and maybe I will drop the call in link. Liking the video is an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. Did you guys end up, I want to see what the ratings are for Potomac. And look, in all fairness, last week it was football. This week it was the Grammy. So Potomac's ratings might be not, not what they normally would be, but the ratings, I mean, a lot of you are saying that you're not watching and that you're checking out. I guess we shall see. I guess we shall see. I wonder what production will do for next season. I definitely see someone not coming back next season. Who do you think that will be, though? V, thank you so much for the super chat. V says, not watching the show, but here for your commentary, as always. Thank you, V. We appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, you can also support by liking the video as well. SD Mac, thank you so much for the super chat. SD says, Wendy, I, I'd be putting production on the spot. If Giselle... Can, cannot move on with people. Why does Wendy have to? Because we're talking about a whole other situation. If we have two people not willing to move on, what are we watching? Two people not moving on? <laughs> That's not good for us. I'm talking from a entertainment uh, portion of what we're watching. I'm not saying Wendy has to move on. Wendy, you don't have to move on. Giselle, you don't have to move on. But get off the damn show. Get off this show. Please and thank you. I'm not yelling at you, ST Mag, but this is what I'm saying. Wendy, you don't have to move on. In real life, you do not have to move on. But we are filming a reality show that is supposed to be entertaining and fun to watch. And yes, we have a little bit of drama and things like that. Uh, we'll figure it out and then we will move forward. No one's moving forward this season. So all of you won't get your contracts renewed. Bye. Thank you, SC Mac, for the super chat. <laughs> Look. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of everybody. Look, I'm tired of everybody. Of all the people that probably... Look, of, of, of all the people that probably should not want to move on after Candace's husband was accused of what he was accused of, she's still willing to move on and move forward. Honestly, I probably wouldn't be. <laughs> I probably would have left the show. To be honest with you, I'd be like, my life, my sanity is not worth all this. But Candace has her music career, her acting career. She's thinking business-wise. And I'm sure Chris is thinking that as well. So that's why they decided to stay on the show. But I'm like, y'all take a big risk from staying on this show. With, with someone like Giselle? Mm, dangerous. Mm. Anyways, I say all that to say they wore me out. Okay, they wore me out. All right. Um, before we get to some more callers, I do have some 
um, more commentary on this unpacking party because, as I said to you before, Karen and Mia are going back and forth, and Karen brings up the rumors about Mia being with a rapper, and Candace has the funniest comment. Matter of fact, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play what Candace said. I'm just gonna play the audio so you guys can hear. You know, copyrights. <laughs> Let me just play the audio because I thought this was hilarious when Candace said this. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Hold on. So Candace said this when Mia, when the rumor of Mia possibly being with a rapper. Someone who's looking for security. So she's she's gonna go for someone who is going to support her and her children and her lifestyle. And that's not a rapper, girl. They teach you nothing, you know, in Hoes Anonymous or wherever you went to school. Not Hoes Anonymous. <laughs> Not Mia catching strays in Candace's commentary. So she said a rapper is not where, where to go if you're trying to look for, you know, security. She's like, didn't they teach you anything in Holes Anonymous? Lord, I can't. I can't. So the, the group ends up playing Have You Ever? And Ashley questioned, because one, one of the first questions is whether or not some any of the ladies had paid for D. And then Ashley throws it at Sharice. I'm like, she's like, Sharice, I think you might have paid. And Sharice is like, honestly, wouldn't you be offended too, though, if someone that supposedly is your friend would call you out and says, I think that you would pay for D. And then she tried to make it nice. Well, you know, she, you know, she's a grown woman and money and maybe she doesn't want any no strings. You can get with somebody with no strings attached without having to pay for the D. I know you've been with Gullum for a very long time, but. And see. You know what I mean? That, that that was weird. Like, I felt for Sharice in that moment. I was like, wow. But that always reminds you, Ashley's no one's friend on this cast. To throw to throw Sharice under the bus. I was, I was offended for Sharice. I was offended for Sharice. That she would pay for the D. Like, you don't have to like Sharice. And yes, Sharice has had some questionable fashion moments and wig moments. Okay. However, I don't think she's an ugly woman. And I don't think she has to pay for the D. Do you? <laughs> look, look, look. You, maybe you feel differently. Maybe you feel differently. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Um, then the group, uh, they have a question. We already knew where this question was coming from. Because they asked the question about screenshotting a, a, a family, uh, like your friends or your friend's family, in your phone. So this leads to Robin retelling the story about when she was looking at photos in Karen's phone, she found a photo of Robin, her parents, and her kids. And the group was all like, why would you have... She was like, well, I, you know, I love your parents. Mind you, Robin says that this happened years ago. So why is this coming up now, Robin? Why all of a sudden this is coming up now? At one point, they ask her, do you have a folder with all of our names? And she's like, I do have a Robin Dixon folder. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I believe with the iPhone, it actually, by if, by your contacts, it will actually sort by your contacts and like your album stuff, like, like peoples and places. It will do that. So technically, on my phone, I have a Diddy folder. <laughs> I have a Karen folder. I have a Kim Zolciak folder. I have a, um, let me see, let me see, candy folder. I have a Wendy folder, Wendy Williams. I have a Robin folder. But, I, I mean, my job is reporting on these people. So, in my, look, I ha yes, I have a folder. I got a Teresa folder. <laughs> I even got a Giselle folder. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Look, whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel like it was a reach. Do I think initially when you hear someone just randomly say something like that, it, it sounds, it definitely does sound weird. However, <laughs> look, however, I said this before. She, she probably saw the photo and was just like, there you go, Juan Dixon missing in action again. Because again, it was a photo of Robin and her parents and the kids. Juan was nowhere to be seen. I know. I'm, I'm reaching. I'm reaching. I'm reaching. Trying from a girl. <laughs> Trying. 
I also think it's weird that this is coming up. Mind you, I thought this happened recently. Robin said that this happened years ago. Did this happen when you and... Um, exactly. <laughs> My line of work doesn't require this. I don't understand why Karen does, but... But I, I, I don't remember how many years that this beef between Robin has gone on. I don't know what year this happened between Robin and Karen. But if they were good years ago, I don't see the big deal why she had a photo of you and your family. T.A. says Robin is reaching too. See, <laughs> Sherry says Juan has moved on. Okay. <laughs> Look, okay. Um, SD, thank you so much for the super chat. SD says, yes, they all need to go except the grunt. <laughs> I don't think they're going to get rid of everyone. And I don't think everyone needs to go on Potomac. I definitely think that they need to um, make some changes, though. Michi's point of view. Thank you so much for the super chat. Michi says, G and Jacqueline need to get together and we got a show. Oh, G. I, when you said G, I was thinking Giselle. I was like, why is Giselle and Jacqueline? You mean Gordon? No, don't do that. No, because Jacqueline and Mia are in a good place. They were recently photoed together. Like, my, my, they grew up with each other. I'm not trying to mess up their, their, their family toxicity. <laughs> Look. Sharon, thank you so much for another super chat. Sharon says, uh, D is too free to have to pay for it pay for it ashley's whack i agree i'm like i don't think even sharice has to i don't think she has to pay for it but we have to remember who's saying this and the, the husband that she's married to and what she may have done to have the lifestyle that she has <laughs> catrice thank you so much for the super chat we appreciate the support guys you can also support the channel just by liking the video live chat we will drop the call in link once we get to 750 likes but we have quite a few members backstage already shout out to our members for their monthly support to become a member of the channel head on over to teamcampfire.com backslash join and for merch like this like my hat that i'm wearing house of campfire head on over to house of campfire.com or check out the description of the live show or if you're listening to this of the episode all right what else did I have to say about this? Nothing. We see the preview for next week. Grace is, get, is graduating, but there's also a sit down between Wendy and NECA. I kind of wish they never showed us that Wendy walks away from the conversation. I am so tired from this season, but we're almost done. Can you believe that? We're almost done with the season, y'all. We're on episode 12. And from what I'm hearing, they're going to film the reunion in the next two weeks. From what I'm hearing. So we're about to wrap it up and I'm ready. <laughs> Look, I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. It's it's become just annoying at this point. It's not entertaining. It's not fun. But I'm going to give Karen Huger her flowers. She has tried this season. She has done what Sheree was was uh, given the job to do in Atlanta, and she was not able to do it. She's tried to un unite the women. She's brought the drama. She's brought the heartfelt moments. She's even brought her own personal story in Surrey. Karen, you did that. And when they try to come for Karen, because they're going to DR, Sidebar, why didn't we go to DR in, in um, Married to Medicine instead of um, Hilton Head? 5.30 p.m. Eastern, we will be talking about the latest episode of Married to Medicine, so make sure you come on back at 5.30. All right, Bianca, thank you so much for the super chat. Bianca says, I agree, Wen should move on soon, but I can't put her in Gigi's box. Gigi has been blocking out Wen for two seasons now. Wen hasn't been engaging with NECA for two episodes. We can give Wen more room to clean it up. I agree with that. Bianca, I can agree. Here I go to work on the fence, Bianca. But no, I can agree with that. This is the first time this season where we've seen Wendy not wanting to engage, which makes me believe that there's so much more to this story that I kind of want to kind of get to the bottom of it, but they're not giving us the meat and potatoes of what really has gone on in, in regards to offline between Wendy's family and NECA's family. But I agree with that, Bianca. I'm not going to say it's the same, but at least in the same season, it's both of them not wanting to engage with people. Aisha, thank you so much for the super chat. Aisha says, Sharice could have ironed, ironed her shirt before showing up to Neca's house. Let me read this again, because for those that are listening, they were like, what did you just say? <laughs> thank you, Aisha, for the super chat. Aisha says, Sharice could have ironed her shirt before showing up to Neca's house. Mind you, she didn't even go far. She lives in NECA's neighborhood. And she probably was camping out NECA's house for filming. Sharice, do better. Now I got to go back and watch. See, I was trying to give Sharice grace. And y'all just ready to drag Sharice. Always ready to drag Sharice. All right. Uh, live chat. Don't forget to like the video. We are about to take some callers. So let me switch this out and go 
here. And let me put, do I have my disclaimer here? Yes, I do. Let me put my disclaimer again, live uh, members. First of all, thank you so much for your monthly support. Everyone's getting a minute. Everyone's getting a minute. Live chat, once we get to 750 likes, I'll drop the call link for you guys. Um, let's get to the callers. Let me bring up Jenna. Jenna's first. What's going on, Jenna? Oh my gosh, I'm first. I feel so special. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of felt it in my spirit that I might be. I was trying to click real fast. Um, uh, so, but yes, I'm, I wanted to just say hello, first and foremost. Excuse me for not greeting you. But okay. um, thank you also to Bianca for saying what I was thinking because I don't think you could put Wendy and Giselle in the same category for the reasons that Bianca said. But also, the difference is nobody did anything to Giselle. She's being crazy. She did something to somebody else and now is mad because they got, now she's mad because they returned fire on her. So it's like two very different things. Okay. But then that gives me time to use the rest of my minutes to talk about how if Mia, the fake delusional CEO, don't go somewhere trying to clock somebody else's billable hours, worried about what oh, Eddie is doing for that. his work. <laughs> I was like, girl, I stopped in my tracks. I was like, what? The she ain't had a W-2 since she was serving steak and lobster at the club and twerking on Mary Memphis. I don't think they she get W-2s. <laughs> Or whatever it is, stacks of, I was like, you don't have no job, Miss Ma'am, please be quiet. And um, the only other thing I will say about the fact that, except that they need to get rid of everybody except for the Grand Dame, Candace, and Wendy, I'll even say that NECA could stay because I think without this troublemaker, Giselle, she is the root of all evil on this show, if you ask me. Hmm. I think that they could be fine and make it work and get some new people in there and mix it up. The bitter, uh, you know, the bitter Bettys can go. Um, but I will yield my time because um, I'm supposed to. You have no time time. left. How are you yielding? What time? <laughs> I'll, I'll yield my negative time. Come uh, on. <laughs> <bye>. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Um, I have completely forgot that scene at Happy Eddie's weed event where uh, Mia was like, oh, she's never known Eddie to have a job. I was like, you of all people, the fake CEO is talking about Eddie and his jobs. I feel like because he's one of the husbands, we don't really dig into his work. So I, I never assumed that Eddie didn't have a job. I feel like the, the happy Eddie stuff was like this side gig. I don't know about his work stuff, but I thought that was so out of place. I was like, what? What? You of all people talking about Eddie being the weed man? G Mia, come on now. All right. Uh, Wendy's backstage. We're going to bring... Speaking of Wendy. What's going on, Wendy? <laughs> hey. No, not Dr. Wendy, but Wendy. Um, okay, I'm going to be real quick, Empire. Okay. The re I gave the um, episode of six because of Karen. Because mm. Karen made the episode of six. And two, Lebe is going... Is, I see now she is the poop starter in the whole situation. Mm. Yeah. I can't say the other word because I'm trying to be respectful. But, Thank um, you. I think Lebe is the poop starter. And I thought Eddie was a lawyer. And that's all I got to say. Hope you have a great day. You can give my rest of my seconds to somebody else. Bye. Uh -uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> She's yielded her 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to uh, bring up Miss Bernice next. What's going on, Miss Bernice? Hey, what up, though? Hey, Kim Fire. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm fine. Um... Yeah, six, seven, yeah, this episode. Oh. Um, I'm not saying she's a gold digger, but Mia is a gold digger. She, she, she's in it for the money. <laughs> as soon as she has a sense that the money is gone, she's making her exit. And we've seen that. And if you're going to go for somebody, go for an NBA player or a football player who got long-term money, because rappers... They can they can blow all their money on the chain. Let's not go there. Okay. Um, um and 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 my precious asking those questions. Now she's the type of person is she asking married women in the last five years, have you paid for any sex with another man? All of these are married women. So why would they pay for sex from a different man? Good point. I guess those those questions were, those questions were directed at Sharice, Giselle. <laughs> who else is single in that group? I don't know who else is. She should have said single women answer this question. Married women answer this question. Mm. You, because you didn't secure your bag and you got to stay married to Gullum. That's not our fault. <laughs> take care. Take take care of Sam. And Frodo, and be happy, and let's. 
Okay. Thank you, Miss Bernice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we're gonna bring up. Hold on. Sorry. Like this streaming, I'll be acting a nuts. All right. Live chat. We're almost at seven hundred and fifty likes. I do want to say thank you. We had another super chat. Debbie, thank you so much for the super chat. Debbie says I came in late, so I started at the beginning listening to you. I might watch. Ah, uh, uh, not me promoting the show. Lord have mercy. They better run me a check. Bravo. Anyways, no, that's okay. That's all right. Because then they think they're gonna. I'm gonna have to say nice things about them. Nope. 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 All right. Joe is backstage. You're gonna bring up Joe next. What's going on, Joe? Hello. Happy Monday. Happy. Oh, it's Monday. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I think I'm with a lot of the, the callers. Like, like it, in, in real life, if I'm Wendy, I would definitely just not engage with NECA. Like, I've done that to so many people that's crossed me. I just, I just block them. Like, you know, they're essentially dead to me. But to your <laughs> point too, Kempire, Wendy, well, NECA is Wendy's coworker. So you still got to work with that person. And if you choose not to work with that person, then quit, you know? So at, at, at some point, both Wendy and G, Giselle need to just, you know, suck it up and work with the rest of the cast. Otherwise, they need to go. Agreed. The other thing is if I'm invited to any of these events, like NECA's, like I'm, before I'm going, I'm going to figure out who else is going where is it? Because it could be really far. Do I have to pay anything out of my pocket? Because don't want to do that. And then the last one, what am I expected to do? If I'm expected to actually open up boxes that's not for me, then no, I'm not going. Thank you. I agree. That unpacking party was lame. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I, I thought I, as soon as she mentioned, I was like, unpacking part. Like you do that for like your close knit friends, but you also do that when you are of a particular youthful age and you ain't got a lot. You are a full fledged career woman with a husband, doctor husband, and you're an attorney. Like I'm not coming to take out your wares unless you were like my sister. That'd be different. Or my cousin. That's it. And like some of my friends, like my friends are like close, close. Like my, some of my close friends, I would do that for. But I'm not doing that for, for my coworker. Get out of here. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Toy is backstage. We're gonna bring a toy up next. Let's go to Toya. Toya, you're muted. Let's go to Toya. Hi, Campire. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. Sorry, I'm driving. Um, I'll try to be quick. Um, we haven't forgot how... Oh, let me greet you and say, hello, Kempire, how are you? Okay. <laughs> okay. We haven't forgot that Giselle was the one who refused to speak to Wendy at the beginning of season six. When Wendy walked up to her to greet her, Giselle put her hand up and blocked her. They should have showed that. Once somebody does that to me, I would never speak to them first, ever again. And um, what was I going to say? Uh, Miss Mia, you want to go to uh, when, uh, what's his name? Eddie's law firm and watch him read legal documents all day? No. <laughs> That's boring. Agreed. Okay, that was it for Agreed. me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Soya. Thanks, Soya. Take care. All right. We're going to bring up O'Shea next. O'Shea, what's going on? What time is it in South Africa? It is 11 p.m. on the dot. Hey. <laughs> oh, okay. So seven hours ahead of us. All right. What's going on, O'Shea? Yes. Um, I'm so tired of these ladies not understanding that they are at work. It's exhausting. It's on every show where you'll think you can ice this one out, tell you I don't want to work with. I'm like, y'all are at work. You cannot, I cannot go tomorrow to work. I'm like, I'm not talking to the finance person. They have an attitude. You suck it up, you smile, you be polite, and you're gone. Y'all are, y'all are working. This is a show, guys. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite frustrating. I don't know. I'm just tired of it all with especially with the with the show specifically. You have literally Karen, the only cast member who works on this entire cast. Mm. And I don't know, okay, realistically it's probably the only person that'll get out of this Robin and leave everything else as it is for next season. But like how how does this work? It's it's a mess and Candace and Wendy, no shade, both of you are boring. Outside outside of outside of everything. Like, Candace has good confessionals, but in the moment, where is it? I'm sure at the reunion you're going to be prepared to talk, but where are you and, Ka where are you and Wendy in the moment? You'll need to talk. Mm. You can't come to Twitter. Oh, I'm late. Okay, I'll stop there. But <laughs> thanks, Gilbert. <laughs> it's good. Thank you, O'Shea. Take care. 
I mean, I don't know if y'all ready for that conversation. But <laughs> Amy, uh, Amy J's backstage. I've seen this name in forever. What's going on, Amy? I know. I've been in, you know, cruising the East Street streets or whatever on different channels, but I always sit on back oh. and watch her. How I dare you? I was about all the <laughs> you that big old hiatus and when you went to BravoCon and then you just like disappeared and then you came back. And I was like, oh, Kimber's back. What? It's true. Yeah, no, I did never. I never disappear, even when I'm on vacation. I know, but you know, the interaction, I've always, I started watching the videos versus like calling in. I would like catch up, be like, oh, what can part? And then you have these little update videos where you do like, like, you know, a quick like update of what's going on. So I've been watching those. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. What, what are your thoughts on Potomac? <laughs> I called it because, um, I mean, honestly, I think everyone should be kicked off except Mia, Ashley, and Karen. And the reason I say that, they know how to play the game. They mm. generally know how to play the game. And the only reason I'm keeping Karen because Karen is like an anchor in the group. But um, Candace and Wendy are too invested in this clique thing. Like, we are cold sisters and everybody's on the outside. And then Giselle and um, what's the other girl's name? See, Robin? Forgettable. Yeah, <laughs> forgettable. Robin and Giselle are literally, all they do is hold grudges. So my thing is, it's kind of like they have shown that they, this two, these four people cannot seem to get to the point that it's a show to entertain. And I'm disappointed in Wendy because I feel like last week she did a good job and all the rest of that stuff with their confessional looks and her reading people down. I just don't like that she's trying to turn into like the second Giselle in regards to trying to gatekeep. Like, let's stop mm. doing that. Let's just have a show and have a good time. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Amy, for calling in. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, we're going to bring up some more callers. Again, callers drop out if you can because we, we're trying to allow more people to come in. We're going to bring up Dewan next. Hold on. Dewan, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Kimba? Can you hear me well? You sound low. Why? <laughs> Are you hiding? You, you said I, I sound low? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know why. I'm so sorry. That's um, okay. I can hear you, though. Oh, cool. Um, was it me or that scene with Mia and Gordon? It seemed like a joke where they were sitting down discussing their potential divorce and everything just seemed so set up. He's like, oh, well, I didn't even know about it until I seen the receipt. I'm like, okay, that's a lie. And then they quickly went from that to discussing Ashley and Michael's divorce. Hmm. It's, it, 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 that whole thing is just weird to me. And she's delusional that if she thinks this like radio personality who none of us really know is going to support her and her four kids, I, I, I don't see it. But um, I, I do agree, oh, three, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do agree with um, Ashley that Char Sharice pays the ding dong. She just looks like the type that you could go out in, in, in Potomac and, you know, be young in your thirties and find yourself in her bed with fifteen hundred dollars the next morning. Um, I what kind of unpacking unpacking party happens in broad daylight? <laughs> like you couldn't wait till you know four or five on a, a Saturday or Sunday where we're actually cameras with the drinks. And then lastly, Happy Eddie. I hope that really comes to fruition because I actually live in in Maryland and work in Maryland politics, and so I know the uh, cannabis. Um, legalization process and they aren't handing out licenses like that right now and mm. so I hope that he's actually able to take advantage of it he is you know minority which they place an emphasis on it so mm. um, I hope that comes to fruition I'll see you all take care Dwan. I wonder too I guess we'll get an update because remember during the filming of this episode Happy Eddie you know the marijuana stuff wasn't legal yet so I don't know I don't know if there's an update but at BravoCon he had the merch <laughs> I don't remember if you could no I don't think they would be able to sell in Vegas um, any of that. But the merch was there, and I meant to get a sweatshirt. But unfortunately, I forgot because I, I didn't want to carry that stuff the entire day. I was going to wait till the end, and I was going to get a candle. You know, I like a good candle. I mean, I really prefer soy. I don't know. If, I don't think hers is soy. But it's okay. That's all right. All right. Uh, Adrian's backstage. We're going to bring up Adrian next. What's going on, Adrian? Hey, love. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Just want to give you a heads up. So I told my little sister she's coming to see you in DC. Yay! Yes. Yes. She's she's in, her name is Allison, so she's oh. gonna be there. Okay. So um, real quick. So let me. I know this has been beaten to a dead horse, but I have to have to say this. 
I don't think y'all realize how deep this colorism thing really goes with Giselle. That is a part of her identity. She will never be able to get over the fact that a dark skinned woman had the two had the audacity. That's how she views it in her mind. They mm -hmm. had the audacity to come at her and put her in her place. They're not supposed to be able to do that. And they did it on national television. Mm -hmm. So to and let alone that, but they also have they're you know wealthy and have rich loving husbands when she does that. That's why she screamed and pointed, I just don't like her. Remember, Karen said far away worse. Karen basically said she had an STD and spent time in the loony bin and you forgave her, but you can't forgive Wendy because she said you don't have a man in your house is tacky. Come on. What's the difference? <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, I've been light skinned all my life. I remember that from when we was growing up. There were a lot of women who grew up that way and they still feel like that. I'm telling you what I'm looking mm -hmm. at. I agree. Somebody said it earlier that Chris probably wasn't hitting on her, but she blew it up to make it seem like he was because in her mind, every man wants her. And then when it didn't, it blew up in her face. But the thing about Wendy, I agree, she doesn't have to make up with NECA, but I do feel like they're dancing around the real issue because they don't yeah. want to make the Nigerian community look bad on television. Mm. And lastly, I, I love the happy Eddie thing. I love the play on what was shade, but I think he would do really well if he actually learned the marijuana law and provided legal services for like minority dispensary owners. He could corner that market as the legal expert with the, you know, exposure he has on the show. Go so point. I just wanted to, I just wanted, I think he would do well if he actually learned the marijuana law, because obviously it's coming to be legalized there. But I just wanted to, uh, you know, drop that out there. Side, All right, love. Uh, Check sidebar. your email. I, I, I okay. Will. Sidebar, I will point out this. If you look at Giselle, may he rest in peace, father's history. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's ingrained. Just saying. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's ingrained. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, Adrian. Right. Thank bye. you. Bye. Google Schmoogle. I, I can't remember her YouTube channel because she talked about this last year. I really apologize. But... I will Google Schmoogle and I'll bring it back to you guys because there's another content creator that did a whole rehashing of of it. If you if you're watching, please just make yourself known in the in the the comment section. That way I can pin your comment. Um, because she did a whole video on it last last season and we talked about it. I just can't think of it right now. I have so many things up in my brain. All right, let me get to the other callers. Miss Esquire is backstage. What's going on, Miss Esquire? Hi, Kempire. How are you? Oh well, how are you? I'm doing really good. Um, honey, I'm going to take um, Adrian up on her legal advice and look into me some cannabis laws because that is a that could be a lick. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give this episode seven for completion because I'm ready to be done with this season. I'm very ready to be done. First with Mia, let me tell you something about them patriarchal misogynistic tables. They love to turn. And Gordon, when you trade your wife in for a younger model, you got to keep the gold coming, baby. That's part of the deal. So I don't feel sorry for Gordon at all. I don't know why Sharice is not still on the back of an almond milk carton. I'm very disappointed that somebody found her and brought her onto my screen. Um, with NECA and Wendy, okay, NECA's event is very much giving, hey, maid, I see you got your maid outfit on like you always do. <laughs> it really was. Because why am I in here unpacking your stuff, girl? Why? And with NECA and Wendy, that is also giving Aaliyah back, back, forth, and forth. And I'm just tired of it. Like, I just want somebody to dead the issues with them because it's just not entertaining anymore. To your point, I realize there's substantive issues there. I realize it probably goes very culturally deep. I wish I cared more than I do. I just don't. I want it to be over. Yeah. Um, can I go a little bit further? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, let me say with Giselle, Chris might have a little bit too much dip on his chip, but so do your lies. And you <laughs> need to just stay clear of that man. Stay clear of that man because that man ain't bothering you. And also, I really don't understand that she is upset Steal it, Wendy, because her house was giving Chateau no way. That is not Wendy's fault, and you should have been mad that your contractors allowed anybody to shade you like that. That's where your real beef is. Um, I don't know why Karen is the new reality Montice, but maybe that's what she is, honey, with these screenshots. And Kemp, <laughs> please erase that Robin folder off your phone. I know you need stories for something else. Okay. It's not my fault. It, it, Apple does it. I took a couple pictures at BravoCon, and that's what's in there. This is my Your job, though. It's better set for <laughs> taking screenshots of the Google page, landing page, <laughs> than having it for Robin, okay? <laughs> Love you. Bye. Thanks. That's going by. <laughs> it's not intentional, y'all. This is my job, okay? All right. Let me bring up some more callers. We're going to we're gonna try and get through the, through the callers very quickly, guys, because we're going to be live again at 5.30 p.m. Eastern for our Married to Medicine recap. Daph, we're going to bring you up next. What's going on, Daph? Hey, Kempire. How are you today? Oh, well, how are you? I am well, thank you. I'll be real quick. I was I called in because as I was listening to um, the other callers calling in, I'm wondering, I, I too am 
quite annoyed with the whole Wendy and NECA situation. And th there's so much ambiguity around it. But I'm wondering, being that Wendy's more seasoned, if she's holding out more so it can carry over into the next into the next season. Oh. I think by then we'll we'll be like, oh my gosh, this again. But I'm wondering if she's doing this now and next season maybe be more open to reconcile like when she pulled Robin aside this season. So just a thought. Wanted to share that. That's it. Thank you, Dal. Take care. All right. Um Shout out to you guys because I, I, you know, the brain wasn't working, but thank you so much, Jessica, for reminding me. A couple of you did remind me. So, the uh, video, the content creator that I was talking about was T T's Hot Messy History. She did a, a full video talking about Giselle's father and his history in politics and his problematic comments about a black woman. Well, then that will give you probably a better perspective on why Giselle is the way that she is. I'm sorry. May he rest in peace. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much, Jessica. And those of you that also uh, shared it in the comment section, Rita, thank you so much for the super chat. Rita says, lots of love from Germany, Kim. Thank you so much, Rita. What part of Germany are you watching from? I've been to Germany quite a few times, actually. I've been to Berlin. I've been to Dresden. I've been to Cologne. I've been to Cologne multiple times. I spent New Year's in, in Cologne. I went, when did I go? I went to Cologne this past summer as well because I have friends that live in Cologne. So I've been, look, I've been, I've been around. Just saying. All right. Delon is backstage. We're going to bring up Delon next. What's going on, Delon? Delon, are you there? You're muted, Delon. Delon. Delon, are you there? All right. Delon, I'll come back to you. All right. In my opinion, backstage, we're going to bring her up next. In my opinion, where you been? <laughs> hey, Kim Pye, How you doing? Oh, well, how are you? I'm blessed by the best and highly favorite. I know. That's right. Listen here. Let's be clear. The only reason why NECA is mad is because NECA wants to be on with the eat girls. And she found out, she came here, she looked at them, she was like, oh, okay, these two are out. These are the ones that's the eat girl. And she made an alliance with them. And she's going to drag this on forever. But it was offensive to sit here and call this lady's mom a wish, knowing that in the Nigerian culture, that means you're xenophobic. Mm. So I do feel like there's a lot that you can't just say, hey, we're going to brush this over the rug because not only was it detrimental to Wendy's family, but it was detrimental to them all. No, definitely. Definitely. Okay. All right, Miss Impet. Thank you for coming to eat and have a good day. I'm going to try. <laughs> Take care. Bye. All right. Let me try Delon one more time. Delon, are you there? Delon? Yes, I'm here. I couldn't unmute myself. Where are you? Why does it sound so I'm loud? I'm getting off the work. I'm walking out of my drive right now. Oh, well, Delon, we can barely hear you. Oh my God! Let me try. Let me try go somewhere else. Okay, okay. call call back. Call back. Okay. All right, because <laughs> I I don't want to put the, the callers through this. All right, um, let me get to the rest of the callers. Uh, Cat Tay, I'm gonna bring up next. Hold on, Cat Tay, what's going on? Cat Tay. Nothing, Kim. Hi, how are you today? <laughs> well, how are you? I love your show. I just love you. Thank you. Um. Yes. Let's start with Giselle and Ashley doing a fashion line. I won't even buy that from Timu. And you already know how cheap that is. Um, <laughs> with NECA and Wendy. You call my mama a witch. You said she was doing witchcraft. But yet, still, you want to come to my house. You want me to come to your house? No, thank you, because you might put something in my food or whatever you try to give me. Another thing with um, Giselle. Okay, if you don't like me, why are you coming to my event? Then you came to my event and totally disrespected me by not even speaking when you came through that door. You had to come to my event because you probably weren't going to get paid because you wasn't, because production probably made you come. Because if you don't like me, why are you coming to me? It's something of mine, and then you disrespected me. Okay, the thing with um, Mia and Karen, Karen told her correctly. She uh, should have called her a trick because that's what you are, because that's what you was doing when you got with Gordon. Another thing with, um, who was it, um, Ashley. Ashley um, is nobody's friend. She tried to lie when she said that Wendy didn't even invite NECA, but Mia checked her on that. She's nobody's friend because she's sleeping with the vampire from the underworld. Do we need to just get a life? Because she, she, she needs to go too because she ain't doing nothing really. And um, Can't say I got to cut you off though. Okay, because, okay I'm sorry. But, but yeah, it, that's it. We appreciate you calling in. Take care, okay? Okay. Bye. 
We got a long line. Let me bring up Bear. Oh, Lord, the line just keep going. Guys, I'm going to have to cut it off at some point. I got to go, uh, you know, get ready for the next show. Okay. Uh, where Barry go? Hold on, Barry. I'm going to find you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Barry, what's going on? Hey, Kemper. I'm good. How are you? Not bad. What did you think of this episode this week of Potomac? Um, I thought the episode was good. I will kind of mid. I was going to say, I just, this episode made me realize why I didn't like Giselle. And that's because she reminded me of Phaedra. A housewife who's willing to do and say anything without regard to the consequences. Oh. And even when caught in their lie and where their deception is shown, they double down, triple down, and continue it into the next season. She's dangerous. So I don't know why Bravo keeps propping her up. Mm. And then the last one I want to make is, I think that Black Americans need to separate and not try to understand the NECA and Wendy dynamic. Mm. I can speak as a first-generation American. My parents are West African. They're not Nigerian, but... There's a difference between culture and religion, and in that place, both intersect. Mm. So when I heard Lebe say, hey, be careful when you go to her house, I think something did happen. And basically what that means is be careful when you go to this person's house because you don't, you're, in, you're in their territory. They could do something to you. And if any of the West Africa people who are from West Africa and descent, you know, I'm sorry, is, Barry. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> That this is fault. Black African kitchen table talk that people brought onto TV. There's not enough nuance to be able to explain this to Black Americans to where they understand this. Wendy's mom can very much be Catholic, but still partake in the cultural aspects of that religious witchcrafty stuff. I mean, there are whole Nollywood movies dedicated to this, so it's not anti immigrant or like you know making fun against foreigners it's part of the culture diaspora of west africa i think when levy warning her sister about going to that place I, something did happen which is why wendy doesn't want to get further into it yeah it does make her mom look bad but watching it through that lens something did happen that they don't want to say and they're and she's trying to protect her mom mm. that, that's just my take from it so it's hard watching black americans comment provide commentary on something they don't understand. It would be like me commenting to a Haitian person about voodoo when I'm not Haitian. And this is what it's the weird. Essence article was all about. To me, it added that new layer. We, you know, we've been talking about colorism when we talk about Potomac, but then they added this African cultural part to it that Bravo has sort of put on, on screen without really understanding what they're doing. So but I think we can't blame that on Bravo. That's NECA and Wendy who brought that, mostly NECA who brought it. It's, I, she brought it on the show. Wow. And it's one of the it's it's a weird cultural dynamic thing that's separate and apart from Black Americans. And I think we're, they're putting an American spin on something that's not there. It would be like us commenting on like Haitian voodoo, and we would have no place in that or making mm. judgmentary comments. Okay. So it's, it's just a weird thing. But you know, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Barry. Woo, got me yeah. thinking. You're welcome. Take care. It, now you look at the Levy conversation just a little bit differently. I want no parts of this. <laughs> I'm bringing all my crystals when I come to, to D.C. for the show on February 16th. Oh, he said African kitchen, kitchen table talk. Are we going to have an African kitchen table? No, I'm not having no African kitchen table talk. I don't have room to talk about that unless y'all bring it. <laughs> Look, unless y'all bring it in your African, okay? Oh, my God. All right, let me get to the callers. I'm busy, you know, reacting. Uh, she by GNA. You know what? I can't stand y'all. She by GNA. What's going on? Who is this? Hi, Campfire. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. So I feel like I'm the only supporter that has GNA. So you I actually really have your... something by that? I need your imagination, everyone. So it's velour. Uh -huh. One leg is purple. One leg is blue. So it has some lace and some flowers and some polka dot with subtle rhinestones and of course the extra padding for the nether regions and the best part about my leggings is it has a belt and yeah i paid 80 dollars and i was charged 200 but that's okay because they're a new business and i'm sure that was an honest mistake wait she so, might gna is this true <laughs> or are you making this up because first of all it sounds tacky as hell <laughs> well that's how giselle described it <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> I know exactly that's what how it's gonna look when I make my purchase. So I'm oh, okay. just giving them ideas because I know they're watching. Okay. <laughs> so she's not serious, y'all. She's not serious. <laughs> I need to make that clear. <laughs> Suing me. Okay. <laughs> that was very Watch convincing. Them make though. That. They will wear that at the reunion and I want my credit. So 
the episode wasn't giving. There wasn't much of Candice, and I didn't mind it. Um, oh. Nothing. <laughs> there sorry. I spent all my time describing the outfit. Can by the episode, nothing really to comment on. I just really had to let everybody know when GNA comes out. I, I hope it looks like that. <laughs> I love the fact that you came up with that entire thing, and I was really, I was like, well, how did you get your hands on some of this? All it's right, exclusive. Uh, apparently, I love it. I love it. Thank you, she by GNA. <laughs> Call him in. You're Bye. welcome. Bye. <laughs> Alex is backstage. Alex, is, for the very first time, Alex, you are struggling yeah. to get in here. <laughs> Listen, I was, you know, I had things going on. I was working. Okay, so I finished working. Then I had to go pick up um, a family member at the cancer specialist office. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I had to get home. Oh, okay. so I'm sorry. Lot. It was a lot. Listen, when that girl was describing it, I said, okay. And then she kept going and I said, okay. And then she kept going and I said, that sounds like Giselle. Um, listen, um, I want to know, just before I start, um, may I use the word jizz deposit to, to, no. to um, describe to No. <laughs> use her name. Oh. oh, okay. All right. But we say jizzy, so I mean like... That's because Karen different? calls her jizzy on the show. Okay. Uh, okay. I can, so can I call her dizzy? Because she seems very Yeah, you can, you can call her dizzy. <laughs> can <Okay>. you start? <laughs> yeah. So I did not watch this episode because I feel like I don't need to watch this episode because it's always a copy of the next of the episode before it and the episode before it and the episode before it. And I'm tired of it. GNA is giving Sheen's younger sister that is more low budget. You've gone below Sheen. You've gone below Timu, ma'am. <laughs> you look it, it, it's a disgrace. Um, but I would not expect anything more from someone who was blinking Nosferatu and a Dizzy. I would not expect anything more nor less. Um, listen, I think that this whole thing with NECA talking about, because I've heard from the callers about, I, I apparently NECA said something about Wendy going to Wendy's house. NECA, let it go. NECA, oh baby, is it giving you have no other storyline? Is it giving you have no reason to be on the show other than this fake contrived connection to Wendy? Is that what it's giving? Ma'am, uh, NECA, if you will, um, let's cut the fake marriage that we know you have because it seems like you hate your husband. Um, let's let's stop with the fakery. Let's stop with the games. Um, same goes for um, Nosferatu's ex-wife or uh, not ex-wife yet because she's trying to mooch off of him as long as possible. Um, let's stop the fakery. Let's stop the fakery, Jizzy. Um, let's stop the fakery with you. Let's stop the fakery with your boyfriend, who we know would not be your boyfriend otherwise. Alex, your um, time is yeah. up. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I get on my little my little things. You know, I just can't stop because they're so aggravating. These women are aggravating. That's... Anyways, have a good day. I loved how the people said, "Let Alex on." It wouldn't be a show without Alex. Anyways, moving on. I love it when the callers start to really start feeling themselves when they call in. <laughs> they, they, they forget whose show it is. <laughs> Tamara, we're going to bring you up next. <laughs> Tamara, what's going on? Well, we know it's your show. <laughs> okay, Kempire. <laughs> Thank All you, right. Tamara. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be really quick. Um, yes, I do feel b bad for Gordon. <laughs> Unpopular opinion, but I do. Um, because... She's exposed, like, when, oh, did you see the look on his face when he was like, well, you know, we have an arrangement. And I'm like, oh, I know where he's going with this, you know, I, you know, money, this and that. I'm like, oh, Mia, don't be mean. He's got kids together. Next. Yeah. Um, I'm done with that. But I felt bad for him. Um, do, 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 do. Wendy, she's being like a Giselle, um, that kind of snobby girl who's like i'm not inviting you to this oh no i'm not accepting this um neka and neka is trying to uh uh do the olive branch and she, um wendy is being snobby i i recognize that and lastly do 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 do, do. i know i have something to say about this Okay, never mind. That's okay. Tamara. Next time. Next time. I love how Tamara next, sounds like a computer. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. You too. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tebby, for the super chat. Tebby says, Eddie, my. 
Oh, my, my Nigerian fine brother. I was like, wait, no. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> my Nigerian fine brother is an attorney at RSM and has four degrees as well. I, that's the thing. I, I, I was always under the assumption that Eddie works. So Mia's random comment about Eddie being the weed man, I was just like, now that I, from what I know, like we haven't delved into Eddie's work situation, but I was just like, I thought he had a job. Um, so anyways, and honestly, look, based off what we can tell from Nigerian culture, that wouldn't be acceptable if, if he didn't have a job either. Just saying. Um, people be people in, I like that name. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, they say, instead of addressing colorism, production ele uh, elected to pivot and highlight a Nigerian cultural issue that they have no wherewithal to address. Now we have uh, two very sensitive topics that need to be resolved. And I told you, because they didn't resolve the colorism, I'm not surprised that now we're delving into areas that they, that's even more problematic. I'm not surprised by that. But like I said before, it's never too late. It's never too late to address this. And honestly, do you guys have opinions on who could who could address um, this cultural, this very sensitive cultural issue that they've brought up this season within Nigerian culture, within African culture? Please suggest, because you know they watch. Hey, producers, hey. <laughs> I'm not saying that. They came up to me at Provocat and told me they watched. I'm just saying. All right, Ace is backstage. We're going to bring up Ace next. What's going on, Ace? Hi, Kempire. It's Hello. my first time calling. I love your show. Thank you. Really happy to see all the great things you're doing and Thank with you. your live show. So. Thank you. Um, one of the things I wanted to comment on, I saw Giselle's Clorox endorse that her new ad that she got. Um, oh. It was It's one of the Peacock ads that they're showing now. Oh. But I bring that up to say... Giselle's behavior is not going to change because production seems to be rewarding her mm. for her behavior. And even with like the clips that they show of this from the reunion um, and how she incited violence, quote unquote, but they don't really show any of the flashbacks where Giselle couldn't clearly articulate what, um, what sorry i'm losing i'm blanking chris. out what what chris did and how he made her uncomfortable mm -hmm. so it just seems like it's very skewed and nothing is going to change if she keeps getting rewarded for bad behavior but no. that's it thank you so much ace for calling in take care thank you you bye. too bye I mean, I agree. And like I said before, I feel like the reason why we've gone from colorism now to this whole other issue is because we never really addressed the colorism issue. All right. I, I can't even imagine where we're going to go next. Um, let's try Delon again. Delon, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, much better. What's going on? What are okay, your thoughts? Right. We, got, we got a little quiet place. Okay, quiet place. <laughs> but mainly my issue this week is production because they are really failing to give us a good show mm. because y'all are not focusing on the real problem, which is Giselle and Robin, but y'all are too focused on making Candace and Wendy look like villains when they are actually the victims mm. of their wrongdoings. And the flashbacks made no sense because it wasn't Giselle's event, but yeah. and etiquette, as everyone says, at least speak to the host. You don't have to talk the whole time at least speak to the host yeah. Giselle was not the host so why am I speaking you know yeah and you feel so unsafe so why are you here <laughs> and um also and I don't I feel like people are not uh giving Wendy some grace because this is our first time like trying not to uh engage with someone but Giselle has been doing this for a season mm. yeah. So that's that's the difference I have. And also, production needs to stop being these women's friends and get the job done, period. Ooh. All right, Delon. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye. All right. Chechio is backstage. We're going to bring up Chechio. Guys, you're just joining us. This is our weekly recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac. If you're part of the Replay crew, be sure to let us know where you're watching from, your thoughts on the episode, how you'd rate the episode, your thoughts on what we had to say. Again, we do not moderate adults in, in the chat, so don't uh, don't argue with people about their opinions. You can just state your opinion and then keep it moving. Or if you have nothing nice to say, you know what your mama said. <laughs> All right, let's bring up Chechio next. Chechio, what's going on? Hey, Empire. How are you? Um, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. 
Okay, so this Wendy and NECA situation is stressing me out. So look, let me just put it like this. This, this, is how this, this is how serious the situation is. There is not one Nigerian person on this in this world who will forgive NECA for what she said. It is that bad. It is very deeply rooted. It's not even something that's worth and able to explain talk less of explaining it on national television mm. so i'm 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 actually commending wendy at least for now because <laughs> she i don't even know like if that was something that was said to me how i would address that publicly because even like like my parents hearing me talk about something like that on national television is like insane like they would call it like an abomination oh. <laughs> like it's such a it's such a crazy thing to be brought up on national television and then for it to be brought up by like someone else who's nigerian it's crazy like crazy so mm. it's kind of, i just don't know what to do with bravo when people do these type of things like what do we do because i really wouldn't address it either like it's it's above wendy like it's beyond her like mm. it's it's almost like shameful to have the discussion, you know? So, oh, so this is why she doesn't want to have the one-on-one. -on -one. I feel like this is, I mean, I don't, I, I don't doubt that they have other history or something possibly, yeah. but to specifically discuss that whole thing and how people are saying, Oh, let's talk about it. Let's break it down. Let's bring an expert. Like oh. those are not options that are available. <laughs> like nobody is going to come on national television and confidently talk like this is not like would they come on a youtube channel look, look, would they come on a youtube channel <laughs> right <laughs> this is just your everyday conversation Kevin. honestly so I, I, and i wouldn't i wouldn't even necessarily thing. just do it for youtube i would just want to like a, an actual real life conversation so i could have an understanding because yeah, i do want to understand those kind of conversations where like you could in their grave with you having it <laughs> it's like that level of like it's real kitchen table talk. Yeah, this is like beyond. Like this is this is high level kitchen table. It's Illuminati like, probably, kitchen not, table talk. No, not Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> but top secret. It's 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 not even a, it's not even a secret. It's just like taboo, just an ancient taboo. There you go. Like just an ancient way back thing that is just like oh my, like seeing it. I'm telling you, there is no Nigerian that's on Neka's side. Like any anybody who brings this up. They're just like, I can't believe it. This is crazy. Like NECA has literally like embarrassed herself. <laughs> so it's, it's. I heard it's bad in the DMV right now for her. I mean, nobody like people look at her like she's crazy. Like it's I, I don't live in a DMV, but just having the discussions within like friends, it's crazy. Like it's insane. So it's wow. I don't even know how they would start to have that conversation. I wouldn't even recommend it. I would just say stay away from me. Honestly, Nika just got to leave this show. She played herself. <laughs> There's no other way to have this conversation, especially as like if you grew up like very like traditional, you know, like it's just terrible. It's a terrible, terrible thing to bring on national television. It's not something that someone can understand in a five minute conversation or a, a one hour, two hour. Like, you know, it's like. Chechio, have you had a conversation like with your own family about what's happening on the show? Oh, you don't even you don't even want to say. Oh my God! All right, Chetia, I'm gonna let you go. I'm not gonna even hold you. Oh my God! But thank you. I feel like we shouldn't even be talking about it. All right, we're gonna move yeah, on. That's how I feel. It's like don't touch it. Everybody shut up. Like ah, no. Like it's literally like I can't believe it. This is crazy. This is on TV. Turn it off. Like it's literally that kind of thing. So just to give people a feel of a magnitude of from like someone from a Nigerian background. Uh oh, we, we, it's insane in the membrane. Okay, so I don't know how they and look, Chacho, every, I don't know if you noticed this, but um, your your thing keeps going in and out. I feel like something's happening, so I'm gonna let you go, Chacho. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna let you go, and oh, I'm gonna wait, hold wait, on to this crystal. <laughs> Just to give you your flowers really quickly, your cover photos are the best on YouTube. Period. Oh, for thanks. all of your posts. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, Chachio. Take so, care. Thank you for giving us insight on this. <laughs> uh, or at least giving us some sort of insight. And now I'm scared. A, a feeling. Of, yes. You know, yeah. yeah. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Bye. <laughs>
And I'm sure because, you know, we have a large Nigerian, South African, African in general community that watches um, the channel. Please feel free to chime in. I, I'm, I cannot wait to read the comments on this one because this is deep. This is some deep stuff. Okay, I got to go. But I'm going to take some more calls. But let me just say thank you. We got a couple of uh, super super chats as well. Miss Esquire says, you, um, you could disable the chat so that we can just listen. I would really love to have more educate. Me too. But you heard, you, I don't think we can even do that. But I understand that maybe it really isn't our place as an out, as outside of, of the culture. <sighs> damn. Look, damn. Queen, thank you so much for the super chat. Hold on, Queen. Uh, Queen says, I'm, I am Nigerian and what NECA did is unforgivable. Also, now I'm getting a better understanding of why Wendy's treating her the way that she's treating her. All of these Osu things that we are trying so hard to overcome is what she chose to be her storyline. This is what I love about the internet though, because I think what we're learning just in this one live show is far more than what those producers even knew about what they were bringing on this reality show. Joe, thank you so much for another super chat. Joe says, so if this is so if this topic is so taboo, then why did NECA or her family not stop her from bringing it up on national television? Because, you know, there will be always one person that just wants fame and they don't care how they're going to get it. Um, or maybe a producer encouraged her to say it. Who knows? I'm not going to put it on the producers, but they decided to roll with it. Instead, it seemed like they they instigated and perpetuated it throughout this season. Well, that's also producers. That's also producers. You give them a little, they, they will run with it. All right. Let me get to some more callers before we run out of here because I will be live again at 5.30 p.m. Eastern for our Married to Medicine recap. That's 2.30 p.m. PST. Shout out to everyone watching on TikTok. We appreciate you guys watching from behind the scenes. Shout out to those of you that are watching on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share the video. We're almost at 1,000 likes, guys. We have almost 1,700 people watching on YouTube. No, 1,700 people watching on YouTube. So thank you so much for doing that. Regina has been waiting patiently backstage. Regina, what is going on? What are your thoughts? You're going to close this out. Oh, wait, you're muted. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm muted okay. now. You can hear me. I wanted to give you your flowers first and oh. tell you, thank you for your show. I had never gotten into, like, the YouTube blogger if you will type of thing but Am I, I a started blogger? listening <laughs> you're not a blogger no but I have started listening to you I found you it was in my algorithm and I was like who is this and so you have really just been such an uplifting spirit and everything Thank and you. my three-year-old knows who you are that's so sad he's like Mr. Kent he's like who are you listening to Mr. Kent Hire? oh I love that <laughs> so yeah but so just keep doing your great work and everything and stay encouraged and keep staying positive no matter what haters or anybody else is in a sack thank you regarding this i think that production really missed out on an opportunity to be educated because i am african-american i'm not nigerian i don't understand that culture so to hear it from the perspective of nigerian people saying that's so taboo and that's so bad it's like oh that makes more sense because honestly coming at it from my perspective wendy is, looks like she's gonna be out of a job no offense, but Giselle, uh, Giselle and Robin have already been production favorites, if you will. Mm -hmm. They've gotten a lot of leeway. They've been able to get away with, I'm not going to film with her. I'm not going to deal with this one or that one. Wendy does not have that grace mm -hmm. because Wendy is not a production favorite. Mm -hmm. So Wendy saying, I'm not going to talk to you or I'm not going to sit down with you very well could cost her her position in this group, yeah. which would be a shame. But I think that that's more of an educational thing as well. This is an opportunity that Bravo needs to take advantage of in terms of educating themselves as well as the viewers on culture and the different cultures and everything and why this was such a big deal. Because it, it seems like this was so bad. NECA should be gone. NECA shouldn't have brought that type of thing up. That's unfair to yeah. Wendy and her mother. Whether, whether it's true or not, it's unfair to bring something like that up yeah. on a national platform. And, here, and then also, oh, go ahead. You know, here I am twerking on fence because <laughs> also I'm thinking that they are on a national platform yet again. And when you sign up for something like this, you have to be prepared that mm. someone ignorant, no wanting fame or not, is going to bring up something that is not appropriate and not good to say. Yeah. So you kind of have to understand both sides of the coin. And, and, we we'll are, roll with and it. here's the important thing that I've learned from this live. <laughs> 
is that Wendy will not be able to explain it to us. Because you saw Checho didn't even want to explain it to me. So the audience that didn't see our video or, or, or isn't surrounded by folks that, that can educate them, they're going to be like, oh, Wendy doesn't have any grounds for feeling the way that she... Because they don't know. And Wendy's not going to be able to explain it to us. So it's still going to be like this sort of like uh, gray area. Exactly. Which is could cost her her position, which yeah. is so sad to see. But it really could potentially cost her her position on that. So somebody's got to figure something out. They better figure this out quickly if they want to salvage this. Not to mention, we already know what's happening with Atlanta. Ugh, just too much drama. Come on. I expect my sisters to do better. Just saying. Yeah. Anyway, Regina, thank that's you so all much I want to say. In. Have a good day. You too. Take care. All right. Wow. Wow. So, you see, do you see the journey that this live took? Because I went from having the positions like, oh, get rid of her. Because if, it, if you're not gonna, going to, to, to do your job or share your thoughts or engage in the conversation, I don't want you here. But then now, look, by the end of the live, my I've, I've officially moved over to the other side of the fence and I'm twerking over here. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shout out to all of the callers. Shout out to our community that continuously. And that's why I always say why I'm always twerking on a fence, because I never believe truly that it's necessary black and white. I always feel like, well, you know what? I never thought of it that way. Sometimes you guys really explain or educate me on things that I didn't know. And I'm not afraid to say I did not know that. Or I'm not afraid to say that I was wrong. And I'm a Taurus. <laughs> We're never wrong. <laughs> um, let me say thank you because we uh we got another super chat hold on guys if you haven't already be sure to like the video it's an easy and free way of supporting the channel speaking of supporting the channel don't forget rose forever is giving you guys a 40 dollars off discount head on over to roseforever.com and use the discount code kempire40 for 40 dollars off plus you can get free worldwide shipping with an additional discount code of influencer more information will be available in the description valentine's day is right around the corner why not get a, a gift that will actually last i'm a taurus i'm practical give me a gift that will last me more than 10 days okay <laughs> more information on Rose Forever will be available in the description of this video. And of course, thank you to Rose Forever for sponsoring us. This has been a long-term partnership with them. Queen, thank you so much for another super chat. Queen says, I think Bravo needs to start hiring production who come from different ethnicities and demographics to avoid these worldwide TV embarrassments and disgrace. What they definitely needed was at least a Nigerian or African producer um, that is educated on this type of stuff. Whew, Lord. Anyways, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you to everyone for joining us for our Real Housewives of Potomac recap. This was a long one, over two hours. Over two hours, but you guys stuck it out with me. And I hope you will stick out with me uh, because I have so much to say about Married to Medicine. I need to go have some tea because <clears throat> we've been talking a lot. Thank you to our King's Guards for always holding us down in the live chat. Shout out to our channel members. You guys, some of you have been members for two years, almost three years, some folks. Some of you are new members. There are all kinds of really great perks that are not even listed with the membership that you get for being a part of a, the Kempire uh, membership here on YouTube. Shout out to those of you that are sending gifts and moderating on TikTok. Shout out to those of you who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitch, all the places. We appreciate you guys. And then we appreciate all our callers for educating us on things that we just had no idea. We had no idea. Thank you all for being here. I will see you all at 530. I'm going to get out of here. Bye, y'all. Your book was my best life. Yeah. Your book was my best life. Yeah. It's something you love me. Oh. Your book was my best life. Yeah. Jumping, flexing, I uh know. -oh. I just want to know. Something you don't mean, oh. You both got some of the best life, yeah. Life, yeah. You some of my best life, yeah. Something you me, oh. You some of my best life, yeah.
something flexing on her I just want to know Something you and me, oh You're both what's on my best life, yeah You're both what's on my best life, yeah You're both what's on my best life, yeah 